Okay, so in this video, we're going to cover uh, a walkthrough of the food inventory sheet. The food inventory sheet is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's where you're going to be tracking all of your stored food, and it's what drives the numbers that you're seeing here on the dashboard, right? All of these numbers, all of these, everything down here, these graphs, all these three graphs, they're all based on your assumptions, which you should have already filled in or at least familiarized yourself with so that when you start adding food to your food inventory, you can start making adjustments uh, to your own needs or, or preferences. So let's go ahead and jump into the food inventory sheet here. And I'm going to do a walkthrough of the, of the columns so that you understand uh, what's here, what the columns mean, uh, what different things might mean uh, when you see conditional formatting, for example, in some of the columns, etc. So they're pretty straightforward, but I want to walk through it anyway, uh, just in case there's any question about um, about the columns, about the information that's populated, etc. So the barcode column, fairly straightforward. If you're entering food using a barcode, that this is where it would go. I'm going to have a separate video specifically for how to enter your food items via a barcode, which makes things faster. Uh, so I will cover that specifically in an, in an upcoming video. The next, uh, the next column is the category column. And this is one of the columns that, um, that gets set up based on your preferences when you first, uh, when you first purchased the ultimate prep system you provided your preferences in a form and then I, I set you up based on those preferences so all of the all of the categories that you selected that you wanted to track based on are in this category drop down okay and the nice thing about the system is it can be as specific or as general as you want so you know some people um, have multiple categories for grains for example um, you know, some people might have a separate category for pasta, a separate category for sauce. You know, any of these, if you want to get more specific, uh, the, the system definitely supports that. Um, you know, for me personally, this is what works best for me. And, and frankly, um, my needs have changed over the time that I have been prepping. So, you know, as my needs change, I, I would uh, update the categories accordingly. Now, uh, if you need updates to your category options here. All you got to do is uh, email me at support at prepper-nerd.com and I can make those changes very quickly for you and I'm very happy to do it. So, so and you'll see here there's a, uh, a red cell. This is, uh, I, I entered this unknown category uh, just to demonstrate this for you. So you'll see unknown is not a category that's listed in the dropdown, but I was able to add it, um, you know, as as the category for this item. But the th the what what the red shading is telling you is that this category doesn't exist in your drop down options. And if it doesn't exist in your drop down options, it also will not show up on your dashboard, and will not count toward your total food storage on your dashboard. And I'll go back to the dashboard and show you. It won't count here. It won't count here. It won't show up here. It won't show up anywhere where information is being aggregated. So that red is just indicating that there's an issue there. And if that's okay, for some reason you've typed in a category that you don't need, you don't need to be on the dashboard, that's fine. The system can support that as well. But that's what that red means. Okay, so moving on the description. Um, this is just a free form text field. Um, there's some nuance about um, you know, entering descriptions according to a, a consistent format for the sake of building the barcode database. Um, and you can see what that format is here. It's the food, you know, the general food description, then a comma, and then more specific food description if, it, if it's applicable, a comma, the size of the container, comma, and the brand. And the reason I'm covering that now is just in case you don't check out the barcode video. Um, you know, this is, I've found to be a best practice for me. And this is, um, you know, the, the format that I've chosen to ask people to use if they want to help contribute to building the barcode database, which helps everybody using the system 
um, you know, be able to use more and more barcodes. And I think we're up to about 5,500 now. So that's fantastic. Um, but this this uh, this column will accept any any text you want to put in here. So it's completely up to you uh, what what you you know how you want this to read for for each of your items. Also, I wanted to explain why I have multiple rows with the same food description. Right? You can see here baked beans, original, 117 ounces. These are the same. These are the same. You know, these are essentially the same. These are the same, it's, whoops, these three. So the reason I have multiple rows with the same food description is because each of the rows has a significantly different best by date. So what this does is it helps me rotate through my food storage uh, more efficiently, more effectively so that, you know, when I, when I need baked beans, right? This this column I've sorted um, alphabetically, so I, you know I can see I've got you know these are my baked beans, right? It's just a few rows, and then I look over here, you know, uh, what what Best Buy date should I be pulling from? So I know this is the one I want to pull from, and I know where it is, what container it's in, and so I can go right to it. So, um, but it's, but. It's possible that all five of these uh, descriptions could have been the same exact item. They could all be this, for example, right? But they have different Best Buy dates. So that's, for me, it's important from a food rotation perspective to list them separately because you can't, you can't do that if there's only one item, you know, one row um, with, you know, a bigger package quantity. So, you know, essentially like this, Right. If it, if it looked like this, then there's no way to differentiate between all of these packages for this item in terms of Best Buy date. Right. They'll all have the same Best Buy date. Um, just going to undo that by pressing Control Z to undo or uh, this button here for undo. So so that's why it's it's because of food rotation so that I can pull the so I know exactly where the oldest uh, item for that type of food is so I can so I can use that first the storage area this is another drop down box but in this case there you know you you may have these check boxes here and a check box in a drop down means that you can select multiple options okay so you may or may not have that if you do have it but you don't want it just let me know just contact me at support at prepper com. If you, and then vice versa, if you don't have it, but you want it, just let me know. I'm happy to, to make that change for you. Um, same thing here with storage containers. Again, these, these three columns are all based on your preferences. You may or may not have these on your sheet based on the preferences that you submitted when you first started, uh, when you first got set up with the program. Some people say, you know what? I don't want to track storage container type or storage container name. So those fields actually get hidden for you so that your sheet is, you know, specifically oriented towards your needs and you would only see the storage area there. Okay. So again, if you need additional or if you need any changes, maybe you want options removed, maybe you want options added, you can just uh, email me and I'll make those changes for you. So same thing here. This, you know, because it has checkbox, it's a multi-select uh, drop-down. Storage container name, this is just a free form. Oh no, it's not free form. This is actually um, also a drop-down list, but this one, it would just select, it would just accept one selection. Attributes, this is a fairly recent update that was made to the Ultimate Prep System. So if you don't have this and you want it, just let me know and I'll get you upgraded to the uh, version that offers this and you just let me know what, uh, what attributes you want to be able to track by. And what these attributes do, you know, really all of this information, um, what's important to understand is that you can then create filters off of these, right? So for example, I've got a bunch of default uh, filters for categories. Um, and so what that means is just as using attributes as an example, if, uh, if I selected, again, I can select multiples of these. If I select it's vegan and it's sugar-free, just as an example, um, 
you know, I can then, and, I, and I've done that for my food inventory, I could then create a filter for sugar-free, where the attribute is sugar-free, okay? And you would just go new filter, sugar-free, and you go attributes, has any of sugar-free. And that's it, there's your filter, right? So that's pretty handy. And you're able to create your own filters. Um, the difference between your capabilities and mine is I can create shared filters, which just means that I'm able to create filters that you can see, but you're able to create your own personal filters, which is all that really matters anyway. So I'm gonna unfilter and I'm gonna remove those attributes. The next is uh, the two columns related to Best Buy dates. So if you chose in your preferences to track Best Buy dates for your food, then this is where you would do that in the Best Buy date column. You can see some color coding here. Yellow means that the Best Buy date is coming soon within the next six months. As you can see here, this is 162 days until this Best Buy date. And here, uh, sorry, here, this is over the Best Buy date. You know, and you decide how you want to use that information. I'm not telling you whether that means something is uh, is no longer um, able to be eaten or 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 is able to be eaten. I, I'm not providing any guidance along those lines. There's lots of information out there from people who are far more experienced with with this topic than I am. Uh, but it is a at least a reference point, right? So for me, I do track Best Buy dates, but I consider it to be a reference point. Does it mean I throw this item out once it's past its Best Buy date? Absolutely not. I'm gonna check the can. I'm gonna see if there's any damage. I'm gonna see if there's any bulging. Uh, you know, once I open the can, I'm gonna use my senses and uh, smell it and so forth. So, you know, that's a decision that I personally will have to make for any foods that are past their best by date. And Frank, you know, honestly, um, you'd have to, you'd have to make those judgments based on any uh, food item that you open, whether it's past best by date or not. But, um, yeah, there's lots of information about that, but this is where you'd enter the date. This next column days until best by date, this is a calculation. So you can't overwrite these numbers. They're just a calculation based on the best by date and, and uh, the number of days between today and that date. The next column is serving size. This is a free form text field. You can type pretty much whatever you want here. Although, um, you know, if you are trying to contribute to the barcode database, I would want you to use, you know, um, formats like you see here. Um, you know, pretty standard in terms of the types of, uh, you know, um, you know, values that you would see for serving size. But this is basically just what it sounds like. One serving is a half a cup of this item, for example. And, you know, uh, food labels have this information. So I would just replicate what's on the food label. Uh, target package, or <laughs> target, target package quantity is the next column. And you may or may not be using this, but this is basically just what it sounds like. So if I'm targeting to have three, of these packages and I only have one, right? Then I can, it can, um, you know, um, call that out to my attention by, by doing that. So um, package quantity, this is how many of a package you have. So, you know, in this case, in this case, I have uh, six of whatever this is or three of whatever this is, okay? And then the next column is servings per package. So, um, for each one of these package quantities, each one of them has 26 servings, right? And so this time package quantity times servings per package equals total servings. Okay, pretty straightforward. Uh, the weight per package, uh, this says pounds, but I know, um, inter you know, customers who are using the Ultimate Prep system uh, outside the United States uh, may, you know, may use the metric system. So um, they can use this field, you know, in terms of uh, kilograms, for example, and it'll function the same way. Um, it's just a late, this is just the label of the column. So if you're using this feature, which uh, was something that was introduced fairly recently. So if you don't have it, but you want it, let me know and I'll, I'll get you upgraded. But uh, this is just what it sounds like. So, you know, um, I might be targeting oh actually sorry let me back up this is the actual weight for 
this item. So, um, and this is just an example. Obviously, this is not accurate. Um, these are just examples. So, you know, you would just enter the weight in pounds, not in ounces, but in pounds, of uh, each of these items, and then and then on the dashboard, the uh, the third graph in the center of the dashboard would then add up all of the weights of that category that you have and it would display it, the graph accordingly so you can see here i have 300 pounds just as an example purposes these are not accurate uh, so it would show that way and then last is uh, calories per serving we'll, we'll go over these but those are calculations the the last entry uh, option here is or cat uh, column is category <laughs> is calories per serving. So it, this is just right off the food label. Um, so for each one of these servings, there's 150 calories. Okay, so um, so the total calories actually equals the package quantity times the servings per package times the calories per serving. Okay, we already covered total servings. We just covered total calories. The days on hand, this is this takes the calories and it divides by um, your needs, your family's caloric needs per day. So for this one item, right, this one item, uh, based on how many packages I have, based on how many servings per package, and based on how many calories per serving for that item, that item represents uh, 0.81 days of calories for my family if I if we ate nothing else that's that's what this column means obviously we wouldn't only eat beans all day um, uh, you can imagine what that might lead to <laughs> um, but uh, but that's what that means 0.81 days worth of calories and then days on hand worth of servings um, so I'll take this back to say beans so um, Based on the preferences in the uh, servings per day sheet, uh, this this one line item represents nine days worth of servings of, of beans. That's what that means. And then the total weight is obviously um, the package quantity times the weight per package. And then that gets aggregated and represented on the dashboard. And then the last column here, actually, um, I forgot about this one. I don't use this one, but other people do quite a bit. Uh, it's a simple notes column. So if there's just, you know, additional information that you want to have, um, you know, for each, any one of your food items, um, you can track it here. Just as maybe reminders or, or so forth. So, so that is the, the food inventory sheet. Now there's lots of different, um, uh, you know features of Smartsheet that, but I'm not going to go into that. I wanted to cover the, and I'm going to actually cover that in a future video specifically on Smartsheet fundamentals. Um, you know, I did cover the filtering, which is um, very powerful and and helpful. Um, but yeah, this video was specifically about the columns, what they mean, how they're used, uh, and how you can use them. So, that being said, I will see you in the next video.